assalam alaikum students hope so you will be all fine today our lecture topic is production and cost in the short run actually i divided this topic in two parts today we will discuss first part of this topic here is contents are what is the theory of production and firm behavior production function basic concepts of production theory short run production and we will also discuss about relation between total average and marginal products what is production actually production is the physical relationship between inputs and outputs as classical said that production of a good only depends on one input like labor q is the function of labor and we will keep capital as a constant but when we are talking about new classical they said that it's depends on production depends on both inputs like labor and capital it also depends upon nature sources and technology there are four factors of production land labor capital and organization the production is act of producing the goods and services using the using these factors so by using these factors we can achieve output another definition is that production means the transformation of inputs and outputs what is production function some classical economist like von thunin gave his theory about fact of production in 1826 wixted in 1894 professor wixell gave concept of production function in 1901 these are all were classical economists regarding this in 1939 hicks who was a new classical economist he has a most important role in the concept of production function actually production function is the maximum amount of output that can be produced from any specified set of inputs given existing technology so by using these inputs like land labor capital we can get we can achieve our output so this is a process of production function after inputs when we use inputs we can achieve our output through this process the production function can be mathematically written as q is the function of x1 x2 so on xn where q is equal to output x1 x2 xn so on these are all inputs so by using these inputs we can get our output basic concept of production theory here is what is technical efficiency achieved when maximum amount of output is produced with a given combination of inputs combination of inputs may be like capital labor so by using different pairs of capital and labor different um, inputs by using we can achieve our maximum amount of output that is called technical efficiency economic efficiency achieved when firm is producing a given output at the lowest possible total cost so we know that actually firm goal is producing a given output at lowest cost so that is called economic efficiency basic concepts of production theory inputs are considered these are called also called uh, production theory concepts or production theory types input are consider variable fixed depending on how readily their usage can be changed this is variable input what is variable inputs variable inputs and input for which the level of usage may be changed quite readily variable inputs are those that can easily be increased or decreased 
in a short run period short run period in short run period these inputs can be changed increased or decreased for example you can say uh, raw material transport and communication etc here is fixed input and input for which the level of usage cannot readily be changed it will be fixed not readily be changed not easily changed so a fixed input don't change as output changes for example land building and uh, machines labor management these are all fixed inputs which must be paid even if no output is produced so fixed input must be paid if no output is produced here is costly fixed input and input employed in a fixed amount for any positive level of output that need not be paid if output so if output is positive here input will be fixed and if output is zero so cannot be paid for inputs next is what is short run period what is long run period short in short run period we will keep one input is at least one input is fixed at least mean one or maybe more than one input is fixed all changes in output achieved by changing usage of variable so at least one input is fixed so one maybe one and maybe one and more than one input is fixed long run all inputs are variable so in long run process all inputs will vary so here is no mm, any input is fixed in long run process output chain by varying usage of all inputs short run production in short run capital is fixed only changes in the variable labor so we can say it a classical theory where capital is fixed and labor vary variable labor input can change the level of output we can change labor to see the changes in output level so short run production function q is equal to function of labor so here we will keep capital as a constant there is no change in capital but labor is changing okay now we will discuss about average and margin product what is average product of labor if we divide total product by the units of labor we will get average product such as average product is equal to q over l so here q represent the total product and when we divide our total pr product on labor of units we will get our average product margin product of labor actually margin means change additional by using one more unit of labor what will come change in our total product it represents the addition to total output that results from a unit increase in the employment of labor by using one more unit of labor what changes comes in our total out output that is called our margin product we also represent it by uh, these relations represent by a table total average and margin products of labor here capital is fixed capital is 2 so here is number of workers that are increasing and all workers have homogeneous quality here is total product as our labor of units increasing our total product is increasing at first of all it increasing at decreasing rate here is maximum and after this point it decreasing 
so how we can get our average product when we divide total product on labor we can get average product here is marginal product how we can get marginal product what change comes in our total uh, product over what change comes in our labor here change in labor is 1 and here change in first two units change is 52 52 over 1 equals 52 so 112 minus 52 that is I think so 60 will be 60 over 1 that is 60 so marginal product is equal to change in what change comes in our total product over what change comes in our labor one more units of apply when we one more units of labor apply what change comes in our total product that is called our marginal product when our total product is maximum level then after this point here is our uh, total product is maximum after this point is decreasing when our total product is maximum after this point our total product is decreasing and our marginal product is negative we can also represent it by a diagrams here is the relationship between total average and marginal products you can see that in panel A on x axis here are units of labor and on y axis are total product on in panel B you can see that here are labor of units on x axis and on y axis are our marginal product and our average product as we increase our labor of units our total product is increasing at decreasing rate so it is also called called law of proportion law of variable proportion and when we increasing more units of labor at this point where our total product is maximum so our total product is increasing at constant rate after this maximum point our total product is increasing at decreasing rate when our total product is increasing at decreasing rate our margin and of average product both are increasing you can see in panel B diagram average product and marginal product both are increasing but marginal product is increasing more than as compared to average product so after this point you can see that when our average product is marginal product is intersect each other this is this is a point where our average product is maximum so when our marginal product is zero our total product is maximum when our total product will be maximum our marginal product is zero and when our total product is decreasing our marginal product is also decreasing and it will be negative we can also elaborate these relations by more than one diagram look at this diagram this is panel a. this is panel b in panel a is our total product and in panel b our average product and marginal product you can see that when we apply labor one our total product is increasing at this point at decreasing rate after this point is increasing at constant rate and here it increasing at decreasing rate so in panel B you can see that here is marginal product first of all marginal marginal and average product both are increasing but 
marginal product is increasing more than as average product after this point you can see that our average product and marginal product is labor when we apply more units of labor here our average product and marginal product is equal and after this point our average product and marginal product both are decreasing but average product is sorry marginal product is increasing more than as compared to average product so here is our marginal product is greater than average product in state one here is our margin and average product both are equal and here our average product is greater than our marginal product so you can also write down these points on your notebook and here are reference you can uh, follow these books to prepare this topic thank you and allah hafiz God bless you.